we haven't had a Range Rover from this era for a while. This is a 2004 Range Rover HSE and it's got the 3 litre turbo diesel engine built by BMW. It's in particularly good condition. It's done 185,000 kilometres and it also has an excellent logbook service history. All the recent servicing has been done at a Land Rover Range Rover dealer. It's got the five-speed automatic transmission. It's got the adjustable suspension which works perfectly. And it's got memory electric seats. Generally, if a car like this has been serviced at the dealer at the most recent services, it's going to be a good one. There's a reason why they charge you so much money. They go over the whole car, the fine tooth comb, and there's a weep, leak, issue, they'll find it and they'll fix it and they'll charge you for it accordingly. I'm not suggesting that you should necessarily go to a dealer to have this service. There's lots of Land Rover specialists around, but it's great that someone else has spent the money. The next service isn't due until 190,000 kilometres, and yes, the very last service was done at Land Rover. It's got side steps, mud flaps, and it comes in this beautiful light green colour with light green leather interior with cream piping. The HSC also featured rear parking sensors, and this has a sunroof. It's got the split tailgate, which is very sensible, especially if you're backed up against a wall. If the whole tailgate opened, it just makes it a bit difficult. It's got a full-size spare. I'm not sure if I need to talk too much about the off-road, on-road, off-road capability. It is a Range Rover. But basically, it does have low range, and you can adjust the suspension to go over obstacles. But what's even more impressive about this series is it's just as good on the road as it is off the road. It handles more like a car and with this 3 litre turbo diesel engine it gets up and goes very well also but not hurting you at the, f at the fuel pump. It's also got these very nice timber inserts. <clears throat> when this model first came out I, I actually thought maybe it didn't have enough timber on the doors and things um, but this one has been optioned with the timber which is great. Some of them just have piano um, black or grey which I don't think it looks very good. It's a, it's a Range Rover, it's not a um, Pajero GLX. So it should have plenty of timber. The pixels are very good. The car hasn't been in any major accidents. And I don't think you'll find any other Range Rovers from 2002, 3 and 4 with these kilometres serviced at the dealer. 185,000 kilometres sounds like a lot, but if you have a look online, you'll find these with 360,000 Ks, 290, 280, 200, 240, and everything in between. And this would actually probably be one of the lowest kilometre turbo diesels Range Rovers between 2002 and 2004. And it's just nice that it's been so well serviced. I mentioned it's got the sunroof. The Auto Group was the dealer who did the last service. But it's just beautiful. It does everything perfectly. We'll start it up. Okay, and so the key goes in here. It's cold at the moment, so obviously it's noisier than normal. All the lights are there. The suspension's on low at the moment. You've got four settings. Um, access height, normal. Off-road height and freeway height. If you go over 100 for more than 10 minutes, I believe, it actually drops down into freeway mode for better, for even better handling. It's got hill HDC, hill descent control. That's how you flick it into low range. Just put it into neutral, click. It's in low range. It's got dual zone climate control, cruise control. I'll turn it off now. And I think is incredible value for money. If you look at if you're looking at one of these Range Rovers, if you do me a favour and, and just buy a good one, 
Um, when they get to this age, to a certain extent, they're worth what they're worth. So this car's worth about, tw you know, just under twenty-five thousand dollars, and generally that's what you're paying for them. Whether it's a, a very good one like this or a pretty terrible one, um, whether it's good or bad, the price is much the same. I mean, I'm sure ours might be on for an extra couple of thousand dollars more than another one in Queensland or whatever. But for me, that's cheap. If you're paying for the car based on how good it is mechanically, you might actually see value in paying another 10000 Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. They're just worth what they're worth. And we put them on for what we think is a fair price, and we sell it. But you can't, when you're buying a Range Rover, you can't buy the cheapest one. You need to buy the best one at a fair price, which is what we think this car is. If you're buying a Land Cruiser diesel, you know, which is five years old, you can go online and put price low to high and go and buy the cheapest one and, you know, that's fine. Or if it's a much newer you know, Toyota or something like that. But if you're buying a Range Rover, you've, you've, got to, you've got to be a little bit fussy. You've got to ask about service history. You know, when you look at the car, if you go and look at a car and it's sitting down at the front or the back or the side to the side, um, that means that there's probably a leak in one of the shock absorbers. Um, you know, you get in the car, turn the, press the button for the suspension, it goes, and see if it goes up nicely. This one does. So it's obviously had a compressor. But again, if it went to Range Rover, they would see a leak in a shock absorber and they'd say, I'm sorry, you can't have a roadworthy, this needs to be fixed, and they would fix it. So I think this is very impressive, and I really do like the colour combination. The fact that it's got a sunroof and all this beautiful timber just makes a very good car even better. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We are located in Marrickville, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again for watching.